Hey, you, want to see a medieval castle inspired main base, featuring all the attributes you'd expect in a modern day meta base? Well, introducing the Feudal, offering 3 towers of online protection with a phenomenal 5 bunkers of offline protection, with a total raid cost of 85 to the main loot and 100 plus to the remainder. All of this while providing full customization from the starter, the loot rooms and the towers themselves. You fully customize it to suit your playstyle, providing unique experience. With the standard edition costing 4.4k wood, 48k stone, 40k metal, 302 HQM, and the max edition costing 4.4k wood, 72.2k stone, 48k metal, and 306 HQM, it's affordable for any duo or trio. Now, let's start the touring quest. Starting off a base tour, we check out one of our free Miniman disconnectable TCs. With a low upkeep of 944 stone and 159 metal, it's easy to maintain. Disconnect the TC, simply drop down a foundation, followed by a roof section. We enter the courtyard through one of our three gatehouses. Each one is protected by a double chain link fence and an auto turret. The chain link fences are great as you shoot on your terms. Simply open up the chain link gate, shoot, and when you're done, simply close it up again. Entering our courtyard, we check out one of our free quick spawn locations. These feature two beds, a locker, and some drop boxes. The courtyard is also split into two by these chain link gates. We enter the feudal for one of our free airlock, each of which had its own customizable option. Entering the base, we see recess beans with a drop box, with option 2 for the airlocks behind it. Opening up these garage doors exposes a spacious corridor. Entering one of our airlocks, we can see option number 2 features a shotgun trap and some drop box. The cool feature this has is if anyone's holding your airlock or anyone's trapped in your airlock, you can simply remove this window and open up the garage door. If the shotgun trap doesn't kill them, you can simply shoot them. Now, option 3 is just additional storage. Option 1 is a shoot into the starter, protected by an auto turret. Dropping down into our starter. This entrance can easily be made into a bunker, this is shown in the build. Dropping on in, you can see our level 3. Opening up these three garage doors, exposes our furnaces. And some additional storage. Our tool cover is nicely tucked away in the corner. With an upkeep of 11k metal, 90 HQM, and 11k stone, it's easy to maintain for any duo trio. One of my favorite features is you actually turn the airlock into a bunker. Let's check it out. As you can see, you've got a sleeping bag, large box storage. This will drive any raider absolutely ballistic as they'll need to see what's in there. To get loot in here, simply remove the window and then you can drop a small box on the other side which you can loot and then drop into the large box. This does offer a minimum of 8 rockets of protection. If you do want more, you can simply upgrade everything to HQM, turning it into 15. Heading up to the main corridor, we'll start opening up our main wings. Each one of these wings are customizable. The first of which features a battery and four large boxes of storage and a space for a level 2. Option 2 is a bedroom with some additional storage. This offers great protection into the main core as you can actually shoot back. Option 3 is for all the loot goblins. 8 boxes of large storage. Now a bunker is safely hidden, or missable by any raider. To open it, simply hop on out to the outside, drop a foundation, followed by a roof section. This opens up a bunker. As you can see, it's nicely hidden, and you can drop on down, and you can see you've got additional 4 boxes of storage. If you want to turn this into a 15 rocket storage, simply upgrade to HQM. But at the moment, I prefer just keeping it as 8, as its cost is really high for what you get. Jumping up into the third floor, we simply open up these garage doors to expose our corridor. In total, there's three mixing tables, followed by 12 large boxes of storage, simply tucked away in these. I also offer a variety of how you can change these up if you like. With 
got quite a simple shooting floor with boxes and campfires to make sure we can raise our level to protect our courtyard and our surrounding area. Continuing up, you can see we've got great courtyard protection. This mitigates the need for a wide gap. Continuing up, we've got a great shooting floor. Once again, we've got some more shoot downs into our courtyard and our surrounding area. Cool feature is if you jump right up here, jumping up to our tower peak, you can see we've got a turret watching our roof and easy shoot backs for anyone holding our roof. Turning around, you can see we've got a hidden peak, perfect for the disco floor. Let's jam. I like keeping the spacious, so I can easily shoot back if anyone's on the roof, but you can easily seal this up, simply use low walls. Now, the most important feature, our disco floor. You can turn this into a throne room, or you can simply keep it as a helipad. You can even seal it up if you want. I like it open, as this creates an area I can shoot from, an area I can hang out, and it's simply, I can have a quick drop location, simply access my courtyard as such. And with that, we take the throne. If you've enjoyed the intro, and you've enjoyed the tour, stay tuned for the build. And if you've got a second to spare, a like and a subscribe would be much appreciated. Before the build starts, let's do a quick music tempo change. As mentioned, the starter has two options, option one and option two. Option one is more straightforward and for your smaller groups, while option two is for your bigger groups and a bit more complex. As mentioned, option one is a more straightforward method, as you just drop down a square foundation, followed by a triangle, a frame, and then you wall yourself in. Now seal yourself in and drop down your TC. As you don't have an airlock and you do feel like you need one, simply drop down this as followed. This will keep you safe and it'll act as an airlock. And this is technically part of the build later on, so this isn't a waste of time. Now, let's build option two. For option two, simply drop down a square foundation followed by three triangles. Next, seal yourself in. Keep the ceiling on the right wood as you'll have to hatchet it out later. Now drop down the TC. If you want you can drop down a wooden triangle shelf and you can just hatchet it out later. This will give you more storage. Later on you'll have to seal it in and this forms the bunker. As I won't be showing the refinery in its own expanded version later, I just wanted to show it now. Remember to leave those triangle pieces as twig as you'll need to remove them later to allow for your refinery to go down. Now your original airlock would just be turned into shelves and storage. Completely separating your TC from your main area, leaving raiders wondering what the hell's going on. Now for option 1, stage 2, expanding the starter. For the starter expansion, simply drop down the foundations as shown and then seal yourself in. If you are planning on bunkering the starter expansion, just drop down a full wall here. Don't carry on with the following until I show you further. This top section will be required for both. Now, let's roof everything in. Technically you can leave this door frame wood, but I prefer to upgrade a stone and then just to spear it out later. Now 
Now, let's build the bunker to the expansion. Now, this is quite a cool bunker design I saw. I can't quite remember who I saw it, but if anyone else does know, please comment below and I'll give them the credit. Now, the way it works is you actually utilize the pay to win skins as followed. With the standard skins, you can actually drop down stairs and you can actually just climb over it. But with the Adobe, this actually makes it impossible. As you can see, the ridges on the corner of the stairs actually makes it impossible to jump through. And whenever you're ready, you can just simply convert it back to stone. This is quite broken and once again, the skins are always paid to win. Good on them. I personally don't bother with it because you do have the bunkers, but if you are worried you can use it, um, you don't lose much room and to be, to be completely honest, you don't really lose any utility. Now as shown there, armor doesn't work, you need to actually use Adobe and keep it a stone. This does increase the rate cost by 4 rockets, but they could just splash the garage door behind it. This. That's also one of the reasons why I just simply prefer to leave it as originally shown. Now, personally, I drop all my deployables as I'm about to show. Follow along if you want to see the way I like to do it. As you see, the double door prevents you from jumping up, so I'd leave it out and I'll just drop down double doors, essentially creating a big airlock. I do recommend getting rid of the original airlock as it does make the rate considerably cheaper, especially once you build the top floor. Now with better box placement, you can actually fit small boxes between it. Um, to be fair, I don't really bother, it's basically plenty of storage. And with that, that's the expansion. Now let's move on to the next stage, stage three. As mentioned during the base source, stage three will feature three different varieties of airlocks. For stage 3, drop walls and frames down as shown. If you do wish to have a shooting airlock, simply drop down a frame instead of a wall. Next you'll be dropping down a triangle shelf and then you'll be dropping down your window. This creates your shoot backs and ensures no one can sit in your airlock. Due to time restrictions, I can't actually show it, but I believe the tour and a quick explanation will give you enough that you need to be able to build it yourself. If you do have the Adobe skin, I highly recommend you drop down this foundation and seal off your original airlock, as this does increase the rate cost considerably. The reason why you need the Adobe skin is because it actually acts as a pay to win, as you can't drop this triangle in with the original, but once you actually upgrade this to the Adobe, you can drop down the triangle. Stage 4, The Bunkers. Starting off stage 4, you want to create a circle using 5 triangles. 
and just seal it all in. Now you can technically leave the bunker over and leave the left side exposed. I personally just like to seal it off and create honeycomb. Now for your jump up. Now let's build a bunker. Now simply drop down a triangle twig followed by a square. If you did do the tip I shown before, the ramp will actually block you so you'll have to build out nine triangles on the opposite side as shown. Now build out nine triangles and cap it with a square twig. As you can see, nine triangles with a cap. Now delete the build up. Now build back using foundations. Now one of the things that always gets people is the last triangle. You have to make sure the stones are in the bottom left hand corner. As you can see, the stones are in the bottom left hand corner. Please, this is essential or the bunker won't work. Ignore that sound, due to symmetry, sometimes it makes odd sounds and breaks random bits and pieces, but that's nothing to be concerned of. Now once you have essentially upgraded your triangle piece, build out again with 9 triangles and cap it off again with another square foundation. As you can see, you build out 9. Now delete your build up as before, and this is where you do slightly something different when building back. Now from this side you want to drop down two half walls. I do recommend upgrading the triangle to as high as you can possibly go. I'd probably just leave it as middle before dropping down your half walls. And then drop down a ceiling piece from this side. This will connect it onto the two half walls. Now if you've got 28% stability, the bunker is officially working. But you can always fix it out. Now upgrade everything in the middle to make sure no one breaks it. And now for testing it out. So the way this bunker works is pretty much just with stability. Once you drop down a roof piece, it actually lowers the stability, which breaks the triangle. This is an awesome bunker to use as people need access to your externals to be able to open your bunkers easily. I push out the externals quite late on this base, but if you do have spare time and you are worried because you're getting some grief, I do recommend building the externals at this point. Now, just to show it again, this is how you open up the bunker. Now, let's seal the bunker for now and then seal ourselves in and let's have a look at all three of the options when it comes to the towers. Now the bunker shell will be the same so I'll carry on and build that now and then we'll show option 1, 2 and 3 of how you can kit it out. Option 1 gives you 4 large boxes of storage and also a compartment to put a battery or a locker if you'd like. I prefer to use a battery as there is no real other place you can use it. I don't believe there is one that is better than the others, but I do recommend using one of the storage and battery modules in option 1 and possibly two option 2s. The reason why I do recommend option 2 is because you don't actually have any other spawns, but level 3 contains 12 large boxes of storage. Now carrying on to option 2 which is your bedrooms. Now you don't have to put a window frame there, I like it because I like the idea of putting an abrasure on it as if someone's trying to push down you can just mow them down and shoot them in the feet. If they're in your main core this also gives you a place to shoot from. As mentioned option 2 gives you storage as well, this is why I always recommend 1 option 1 and 2 option 2s. If you really are a massive loot goblin Option 3 is the way to go as it just creates an unbelievable amount of storage. If anyone has a way of actually dropping down 
this bait where it doesn't come through the garage door, please share it as I've been trying to figure out a way for a couple of months now without much luck. As mentioned, option 3 lets you shoot back into the core and also mow anyone down, pushing top down rating. Now let's build option 3, the loot goblin. This is my least favourite of the two options, but it is for anyone that likes looting. If you don't have the Adobe DLC, drop down your ramps now as this does almost triple the raid cost, so it's extremely important to get this down as soon as possible. And it also creates a little bunker for you behind the ramp. Now stage 5, the shooting floor and just some more storage. For stage 5, let's drop down the walls for our storage area and then some windows so you can shoot down any raiders. Now sometimes there's an issue with this window as it connects to the stability portion of the bunker. To fix this, simply drop down a triangle roof and then drop it down from this side. Opening or closing the bunker will not affect it, it's merely just an inconvenience. This can be mitigated by just making sure your wall and your ceiling below is actually disconnected and connected to the main base itself. Now let's build our shooting rooms. Technically, you can make this into bedroom if you want, or vice versa, I just carry it on as such. If you don't have a lot of gears, you can sit not at this garage door, and you can simply add down a window, with a window itself, and an embrasure. Now, if you don't have the gears, simply drop down a window frame, followed by a reinforced window and an embrasure, and just remember to open and close it, and this will save you some gears. Now for the embrasures. For this last section, um, it is actually quite important to drop down the triangle roof early just because sometimes it won't actually let you drop it down later, so dropping it now prevents any issues later on. And that's stage 5. Stage 6, building the towers. Now the towers does feature a customizable top, so stay tuned and watch. Simply drop down half walls. As mentioned, that issue, if the issue happens here again, simply just build it from the outside.
Now with the throne down, let's drop down the embrasures and that's essentially us done. With the embrasure is done, now let me show you the upgraded version. This features an auto turret and it allows you easier access to the top. Now instead of dropping this half wall, simply drop them on the sides. You can drop them above the triangle frame as well if you do want to fully seal it off. I prefer to leave it open. And now you can simply drop down a nice auto turret. And customize your peaks whatever way you fancy. Party, role player, it's up to you. Now for stage 7, the externals. This is probably one of your biggest choices regarding the fence and also cost as option 2 does increase the cost quite significantly. Let's start with option 1. Unfortunately if you don't have the adobe skin you won't be able to drop this triangle. This is due to a vanilla issue which has been in the game for quite a long time. If you do however have the adobe simply upgrade these and you'll be able to drop this triangle and start the externals. If you don't have the adobe and you wish to see how to build it out, simply check option 2 which is the external plus edition. This features how to build out from one of the two sides. Now in total you want to build out 6 squares, your 6th one being a twig and your 7th one being slightly raised. This will allow a roof to connect to the side of the wall which will then allow you to drop down a twig ceiling which will reactivate your secondary TC. First, seal everything in and drop down your external TC, just to scare the area. Now, time to connect it. So what you need to do is remove this twig and drop down a roof piece. It's still not technically connected to the base. What you need to do is jump back into your external and then drop down a triangle twig ceiling. This actually connects your external to the main base, so if your main TC is destroyed, it just reconnects it. Leave a twig, if you do upgrade it, it's going to be quite the headache to remove it later. Now, as mentioned, once this is destroyed, it actually disconnects the TC. When it is connected, it activates it, meaning no raider can just simply destroy your main TC to gain access. I do however recommend upgrading these to metal as they can be speared out by anyone that's super determined to grab your tier 1, tier 2 or even tier 3. Now let's build what I like to call the external plus edition. Now to build the external from the side, this is just in case you've already upgraded to metal or you don't have the adobe skin. This TC is quite different as before as this is your typical disconnectable mini style one. Now you simply want to build out 5 additional squares finishing it off with 2 triangles. This will create your external. As always remember your half walls as your TC won't work if it's not done. I prefer to put the door on this side just so you can watch it from the main base in case someone is trying to external TC ready for some reason. Lastly, drop down your TC. And now let's go build the gatehouse. I highly recommend upgrading this to metal, but you can leave it a stone if you feel comfortable doing that.
I always like to face the doors outwards just because if anyone's hiding behind them, it will push them out of the way. Now to connect your gatehouse to your external TCs. Just as always, how these are removed, drop down your foundation, followed by your root piece. Just always remember to drop them in twig because you actually want to be able to disconnect them afterwards or you'll be sitting there for spear for a while. Now, the last of the upgrades, drop down your turret, followed by your chain link gate. And that is essentially your gatehouse. Now, for to create your double chain, you want to build it out like this. Drop a frame, and then just drop down a chain link fence. This will create the two chain links, meaning no one can shoot at your turrets and no one can shoot at you until you open up the gate. I actually forget to build it on the right side, but I do build it on later. Now for your embrasures. And that is your gatehouse completed. Now for the windmills, simply build up your frames until you get to be above your, one of your towers and then drop down your windmills. Now, let's build a quick spawns. These can be turned into either for more gatehouses or storage rooms, whatever you prefer. I prefer to have them in quick spawns just because I believe the base itself lacks it, and a quick spawn in the courtyard is vital for any online defense. Now technically the storage isn't required, you could have put a window in so you can shoot from your actual spawn, but I do think this will create a few questions for raiders, meaning that they might raid into them just to see what's in the boxes. If worst case prevails, you could store some loot in it, because most raiders don't target quick spawns. As you can see, you can clearly see out, although people can see in, you can simply drop down window shutters and you can stop anyone from having a look inside. Unfortunately, the boxes can be destroyed from the outside, but all the loot is dropped inside unless they break open the gate. Now, one of the things I really love about this base, other than the embrasures being simple to drop, it gets even easier when you start dropping the stone walls. You'll see that shortly. Now before proceeding, I'll just quickly break all the twig triangle ceilings. Now, the way this compound actually finishes is one of my favorite ways because you actually can't mess up the walls. As you can see, they perfectly fit in, spot, in position sealing your compound.
Now with that, you're essentially out of perimeter wall is done. We'll just go back and we'll just drop that triangle chain link fence I missed out and then we'll separate the courtyard into two. And with just dropping this chain link fence, we are done. Simply drop down a frame in front of us with a chain link gate and our courtyard is split into two. Now for a quick overview, as you can see, we've got our dual gates preventing anyone from shooting into our actual gatehouses. And with that, that is us done. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for supporting. If you've got any feedback, please like it. Please, li please like the video, subscribe, leave any comments you want or feedback below. I have an upgrade guide, how to set up the bunker storage and a few fun upgrades passing this on. I won't actually be commentating it, but once again, thank you so much for all the support. There is a castle playthrough coming up where I've already started to make adjustments for the V2 version, but I'd like any feedback and thank you guys once again. Your feedback is, always means the world to me and it always changes the way I do my videos. If you've got any feedback on how I deliver my videos, please let me know as it will upgrade the channel and create a community which hopefully strives for high quality videos. Thank you everyone again.